Should you soak your cast iron skillet in the kitchen sink? I think most of us know the answer to that question. What about using soap to clean your skillet? Will a scraper hurt your pan? So how exactly are you supposed to clean up a really sticky mess without removing the seasoning? In this video, I'm going to give you some general guidance on cleaning your cast iron cookware, and we're going to go over some facts, fiction, and urban myths. Let's get started. So there's a lot of facts and some fiction regarding cast iron. I remember when I first started out, there was a lot of opinions on the internet and it can be quite overwhelming because you don't want to ruin your brand new cookware and you want to do a good job and have fun cooking. So in this video, I'm going to try to go over all those facts and some fiction to help you settle in with your pan because there is a lot of good advice out there, but some of it is kind of off and outdated. I think the first one and probably the biggest myth out there regarding cast iron is the use of soap to clean your cast iron skillets and cookware. A lot of people out there truly believe that if you use dish soap or modern day soap or soap in general, you're going to strip the seasoning of your pan and it just doesn't help your cast iron. So this myth actually originated from over a century ago when soap had lye and vinegar in it. And it definitely stripped the seasoning of cast iron skillets. So over a century ago, people realized that if you use soap, soap with lye and vinegar, it was really harmful. Modern day soap is much more gentle and does not contain lye or vinegar. So if you're using modern day soap, you should be okay. Now, if you're ever in doubt, turn the label over, check it for yourself, make sure you don't see any lye or vinegar. And really, if you have a good foundation for seasoning, it's pretty hard to strip that seasoning. Now, there are a couple things that will strip it like acidic foods. I would avoid anything that's labeled heavy duty cleaning, but your typical dish soap like Dawn or anything like that, you should be good to go. So modern day dish soap and washing your cast iron skillet with soap and water is okay. And I actually do it all the time. Let's talk about Barkeeper's Friend. Barkeeper's Friend is a fantastic product. It's really popular with stainless steel users, stainless steel pans. And I love Barkeeper's Friend. But for cast iron, I would avoid it. See, Barkeeper's Friend is a specialty item. It's designed to do a deeper clean, a better job. So I would avoid it on things like cast iron or carbon steel because it can strip the seasoning. So Barkeeper's Friend, although it's a great product and works wonders for stainless steel, I wouldn't use it on cast iron. And likewise, if you've seen my video on cleaning your cast iron skillets, which I will put right here, you'll know that vinegar and water solution or baking soda and water does a fantastic job of cleaning stainless steel skillets. Not so much for cast iron. And generally speaking, you never want to soak cast iron, but baking soda and vinegar, although they do a great job with stainless steel, don't use them on your cast iron or carbon steel skillets. Another thing that I wanted to address is surface finish, surface roughness with cast iron skillets. There's a lot of people out there that are split, right? Everyone knows that when you buy a brand new lodge skillet, it comes a bit rough and bumpy. So a lot of people will actually sand it down and smooth it out to get that really nice smooth surface finish on their brand new cast iron skillets. It was something that was common back in the day when you bought older cast iron skillets. And if you find antique skillets, you'll see that they have a much smoother surface finish. There's two main methods behind having a smoother surface finish. One reason for it is a lot of people think that if you have a smoother surface finish, it'll be a lot easier to season your cast iron skillets. And that's honestly split. The other side to that is it should be easier to clean because you have a smoother plane, a smoother surface where things can less likely stick to. And I'm actually a firm believer in sanding down your cast iron to get that smoother surface finish to kind of mimic the antique way of making them. And, you know, just in general, I love carbon steel skillets and carbon steel skillets come from the factory with a much smoother surface finish with a much smoother plane. And I believe that it is a lot easier to clean and things typically are a bit less sticky, so you do get more of a non-stick surface. Now, seasoning wise, I don't know. I think there's an argument for both, but ultimately when it comes down to sanding your pan, it really is user preference. You can't go wrong with either or, but my preference is I do like to sand it down because I love carbon steel so much. So let's talk about some good habits, things that you should get familiar with and just practice. With carbon steel, cast iron, stainless steel, any skillet, any cookware out there, you never want to wash or clean your skillet when it's hot. 
when it's extremely hot, you just got done cooking with it. If you take it off the stove top and you put it in your kitchen sink with water, even if it's hot water, that thermal shock is just too much. And it's just bad practice. You never wanna do that. You wanna allow your skillet to cool off a bit. Now you don't want it to go completely cold because when your skillet's cold, those sticky leftover bits, that food or seasoning or whatever that you have in there, as the skillet gets cold and those sticky bits get cold, they will actually fuse with the pan or the cookware or the skillet that you're using. So you always wanna clean your cookware when it's warm. Allow it to cool off a bit, allow it to kind of settle, but you never wanna do it when it's really cold because you're just gonna make it a lot harder on yourself. So a really good habit to follow in practice is always clean your skillets when they're warm, never when they're hot because thermal shock can happen and you can warp your pan, but you don't want them to go really cold because it just makes your life a lot harder, but it's not impossible. Another good habit to follow, especially with cast iron and carbon steel, always completely dry off your cookware. You wanna make sure with cast iron and carbon steel that you completely dry them off after you've washed them. And then I always put my pans back on the burner and completely evaporate all the moisture. I think that's good practice. I get some comments where people are like, I never do that. My cast iron or carbon steel is really well seasoned and I can just wipe it down and I'm good to go. I get it. And theoretically, if you have good seasoning, the moisture of the water will have to seep through those additional layers to actually rust out the pan, but why risk it? Putting the pan back on there for just a little bit on the burner, evaporating all the moisture, is just good practice. And it ensures that your favorite pan won't rust and you can pass it down to your loved ones. And honestly, after all the moisture has dried off, I always put a drop of oil and just kind of smear it around to add that extra layer of security. Cast iron, carbon steel, and water just don't mix. So use your best judgment, but it's good practice. Avoid rust and take care of your pants. Likewise, never soak your cast iron or carbon steel. Never soak them overnight. That's just asking for trouble. I got a comment a couple of weeks back where someone said that they always soak their cast iron skillets in their kitchen sink on a nightly basis overnight, and they never had rust. That's either an outlier or that person's just lying or they don't actually have a cast iron skillet, they have something else. You are asking for rust. Don't soak your cast iron or carbon steel. I'm gonna give you some tips about having to clean a really sticky mess. Okay, so what do you do when you have a huge mess with cast iron or carbon steel? Now, if I'm being honest with you guys, it's really rare that I ever have a really bad mess with cast iron or carbon steel. Usually that's reserved with my stainless steel pans or skillets. And honestly, thinking back, I don't think I've ever had a mess that I just could not deal with with cast iron or carbon steel. Now, maybe with carbon steel when it's first seasoning, but with cast iron, generally speaking, they're okay to go. I'm gonna recommend some tools for you guys that you can buy or purchase, but you don't necessarily have to buy anything to take care of a bad mess. You can actually do a slurry with salt and water that will help you scrub out those sticky bits, and that usually works just fine. And likewise, investing in a good brush or even going to the 99 cent store or the Dollar Tree and investing in a plastic cheap brush will do wonders for you. And with that salt and slurry, it usually will take care of a mess. But if you have to invest in something, I love the brush that I have. It's a disposable head, but it also has a compartment for soap. So I really like that brush. I talk about it all the time. I'll leave a link below for some tools that you guys can buy. That's a good item to have. It's just a good scrubber. It's gentle, but good enough to get those sticky bits out. I also highly recommend you invest in a plastic scraper. That just helps, it aids in everything. And for carbon steel and cast iron, it does wonders. For those little stubborn bits that just aren't coming off easily, that plastic scraper will definitely get them off. So I highly recommend a plastic scraper. And then the last thing that I highly recommend that's really popular with cast iron users is chainmail. There's this item that you can buy that comes with like a little ring. It kind of looks like, I don't know, a scuba diver's like chain suit but it's really effective, it's gentle enough, it has rounded corners that will do wonders for your cast iron. Generally speaking, if the salt method doesn't work, the brush, the scrubber doesn't work, and the plastic scraper doesn't work, the chain mail should do a really good job of taking care of a stubborn, sticky mess. Okay, so that's basically it. I hope this video helped you guys out, and hopefully I kind of address some of the facts and fictions out there. I know there's a lot, I can't cover everything in this video, but hopefully this was a general guide for you new owners, new users out there to help you get started in your cooking journey and kind of, you know, go through some of the facts and fiction and give you some insight on your cast iron skillets. 
You've made a really good decision. Cast iron skillets are fantastic. Make sure you use it, get to know it, appreciate your skillets and take care of it because you will definitely pass it down to your loved ones. That's it for me, guys. I hope you found this video informative. Check out some of my other videos and I will catch you on the next one. Take care, everybody. So I actually get a lot of questions about my shirt, Poke High. So this is an Al Bundy shirt for Married to Children. I loved Married to Children. It was a great show back in the day. I mean, it's a little, you know, different for today's scene. But yes, this is a Poke High Al Bundy t-shirt. I found it a long time ago. Someone was selling one. I've kept it ever since. But for those of you that are Married to Children fans out there, yes, I am wearing an Al Bundy Poke High four touchdowns in one game t-shirt. It's a great show.